Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on Nidarians. Today's objectives will be, number one, compare and contrast the two body forms of Nidarians. Number two, how do Nidarians get oxygen in food? And number three, what is the importance of corals? Let's start off by asking the question, what are Nidarians? Well, Nidarians are animals that live in mostly uh, aquatic and oceanic environments. So they are aquatic invertebrates. And again, invertebrates are animals that have no backbone. Invertebrates were uh, evolved before vertebrates evolved, the animals that do have backbone backbones. And Nidarians belong to the phylum Nidaria. Now, uh, Nidarians are a little more evolved than our simplest of animals, which are the sponges. And uh, that's because Nidarians actually have organized tissue. unlike the sponges. And some of that tissue is actually used to protect the Nidarians and also to help them to hunt for food. So Nidarians would be considered predators because they have this type of cell tissue that is a stinging type of cell tissue. And that cell tissue is able to sting their prey or their food source in order for them to survive. Also, Nidarians appeared about 600 million years ago. The first fossils were actually a type of Nidarian that we'll discuss called corals. And corals have this hard outer skeleton made from those stinging cells that keeps the predators away but also helps them to find and keep a food, constant food source. And this would be a picture of a coral. Here are some other pictures of Nidarians that we'll discuss, uh, such as the jellyfish. Here's another coral. Here's what we call a hydra. And this would be a sea anemone. And we'll discuss these in further detail. So some examples of Nidarians, like I just uh, discussed, would be jellyfish, sea anemones. Uh, there's a special type of Nidarian that's actually made up of four organisms put together, and that's called the Portuguese man of war. And we also have what we call hydras and corals. Again, this would be considered a hydra. This is an example of a hydra. This would be a sea anemone. Uh, this would also be sea anemones. This would be a type of jellyfish, and this would also be a type of jellyfish. Let's talk about common characteristics of Nidarians. Nidarians all have stingers. Stingers are the, the cells that actually help to protect the Nidarian, and they also help to gather food for the Nidarian. Stingers can be a simple layer uh, made up of those stinging cells, and just like in the coral, they could make up a hard outer shell or skeleton. But those stingers can also make up what we call stinging tentacles. Tentacles are like arms or appendages that come out of the cnidarian and help that cnidarian to gather food and help it to protect itself from predators. Also, another characteristic is that all Nidarians are actually the simplest organs, at, simplest organisms, excuse me, at the tissue level. Again, sponges are the simplest animals at the cellular level. But sponges don't have organized cells that make up a tissue that 
can help it to do a specific function. So cnidarians actually are the simplest organisms at that level. Cnidarians also are formed uh, from this, this cup-shaped bag, and those cup, that cup-shaped bag is made up of two cell layers. The two cell layers have names. The first cell layer is called an ectoderm. And that's the outer layer of the cnidarian, which is made up of those stinging cells. The second layer is called the endoderm. And that's an inner cell layer that helps to protect the gut cavity or where the digestive system uh, is found inside of the cnidarian. So it covers the digestive cavity of the cnidarian. Here's a diagram. The green outer layer would be the ectoderm. And then this blue inner layer here would be the endoderm. Now, as you can tell from this diagram, the cnidarian has one opening. It's a, a hollow with only one opening, and that opening would be considered the mouth, but also waste materials can come out of that same opening. Finally, all cnidarians share what we call radial symmetry, and that means that their body arrangement is based upon a circle. So if you were to cut a cnidarian, in equal parts, it would be cut so that wherever you cut it on the circle, you can make equal parts around it. That's just like this, you could see here in this jellyfish, if you were to do the same thing, you could see that radial symmetry.